Let's now uncomment section 13 and see what we should do. Select, control, and forward slash. Okay. Again, you can see that over here, let's decide whether we are going to define a new mutator or accessor. We are now in the context of an assignment. On the right hand side, we are, well, as we said before, if you have a method called on the right hand side of an assignment, that means you're going to retrieve its return value and store that on the left hand side. So this must be an accessor call. Okay, so get reminder should be an accessor. And what's the type of the parameter? BD13, as you can see, BD13 was defined over here in birthday over here. Okay, you can see that it was back in line number 34, and that was type of type birthday. So that means the this method here get reminder should get only a birthday. On the other hand, you can see we got another method here also called get reminders, and this one will take two parameters six and sixteen, which is June sixteenth. You can see these two methods are not really completely irrelevant; they're quite related. So you can see this one, basically they're trying to get reminders of the names that you can, uh, for example, if you give uh, June 16th, you want to find out in the current BB, uh, all the names, uh, all the persons who were born on June 16th. That's what you want to find out. And now over here, you have either, you can have two options, either you can pass the uh, month and day explicitly, we can first create the objects of the birthday out of the month and day and then pass it as an argument. So either one would do. We can define one and then use that as a helper method for, for defining the other. That's what I will show you. Okay, so now let's go to see what should be the return time for the get reminders. And this line here gives you a very clear idea what the re, uh, return type should be. You can see on the left hand side, we are trying to store the return value for get reminders into this variable here, which was declared as string array. Okay, and similarly, you can see get reminders, the overloaded version over here, which takes a different uh, types of parameter, you will also return the same thing of also string array. Okay, so now we can try to see that. Also, you can see to remind over here, it's because it's an array, so you can query its length. Okay, now let's be a little bit more careful over here. So, because currently the uh, uh, book is simply just empty. So if you try to get, uh, we know that no names and no birthday exist in the book. So if you want to remind, so there should be no people to remind. That's why if you go to the PDF, it will tell you that uh, number of reminders for BD13 and for June 16 should just be zero. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, but again, when we define a method, we try to be as complete as possible to save time for later. You don't really have to define a method partially just to get a test passed. Okay. Now let's go to our uh, birthday book class. Okay. Now we can also see that we might also be able to use some. Uh, let's see if we. Uh, let's see how we can do this. Okay. So now we have public. Let me just go. Make it a little bit more central over here. So public, let's define one version first. String, and then let's say we do uh, get birthday. Let me just use this version here. Okay, uh, and then we just have birthday here, birthday. So given the birthday, we want to know who were born on this particular birthday, right? So now. Let's document this very quickly. Return the an array of persons, array of persons names, each of which born on this particular birthday. Okay, let's see what we can do. First of all, you should know that you cannot simply just return entries over here, right? Because entries is an array of entry, okay? We should really figure out exactly how many people were actually born on this particular birthday. And then we had to return that, and we didn't know how many first, and create an array, and then try to assign them to the uh, uh, that particular array to be returned. Okay, this method is a little bit sophisticated, but let's do that, it's, it's not too bad. Okay, so now I will tell you the step, first of all, Step one, figure out 
how many people were born on birthday. Okay, let's do that first. Okay, let's now run the loop. Integer is a number of reminders. Okay, actually I got the name wrong. <laughs> so now let's go back here. So I should really call that get reminders. Okay, just a typo for sure. Okay, get reminders over here. Number of reminders is initially zero. Okay, so we're going to go through the, you can see that this method here is not really appropriate to really call the uh, helper method, which is the index of. Because over here, we are not really trying to check if a particular name really exists in the birthday book. We are given a birthday, right? Rather than giving the name. So not necessarily you have to call, it is not necessarily the case that you have to call the helper method in every method. You don't have to only call that when it is appropriate. Okay, so now we can say for integer i is zero i less than noe. Notice that, and the common error is, let me just emphasize again, common error is if you say i is less than entries dot length, okay, i plus plus. Let me write a little bit more concisely, okay? So you would say if entries at position i, which is the current entry we are looking at, dot get, dot get birthday and dot equals. Remember we define, we, we have already overridden the equals method for birthday. If that's the same as the argument we passed, that means this person has to be reminded, right? So now in this case, we're going to just do the following. The number of reminders plus plus. We'll just incre uh, increase the uh, counter and we'll do another loop just to, we'll do a second pass. This is the very first pass. We just want to figure out how many uh, uh, reminder, uh, how many people are there that we should remind. And now step number two. Step number two. So after we have figured out how many people were born on birthday, so now initialize or create an array of reminders of size number of reminder. Okay. So this would be just created an array. So we can say integer, uh, sorry. So that'd be string. And then how about just names? Uh, how about just reminders? is assigned to new string, and then we can say the number of reminders. Okay, that's a step number two. Okay, make sure. Okay, if I really want, I can rename this. I can click on that and then go to refactor, rename, put S over there. You can see you change every occurrence of the uh, variable. Okay, step number three. Step number three, so now, second pass. Okay, how about this? I will just, so this is first pass of entries array. So now it's a second pass. So now we will say, pass entries array for a second time and store all names that are people's name. How about this? Names, all names of people born on birthday. Okay, that's a uh, reasonable comments over here. So now let's do a second pass. We can say for integer i is assigned to zero i less than noe i plus plus. Okay, so now here you gotta be very careful. So now basically you can see i is a loop counter that keeps track of how uh, where we are in the entries array. Okay, I'll write it down first because it turns out we need two loop counters. You can say, okay, over here we can say that entry which is the current one that we are looking at, E is entries at position i. That's the current one we're looking at. So i is a loop counter 
that's pointing to some position in the entries array. However, because not necessarily every entry in the entries array is has its uh, birthday the same as the birthday that we are looking for. It might be at position zero, position two, position five, right? In that case, we are not going to use that position number zero, two, and five to store into the reminders. And somehow they should be converted into zero, one, and two, okay? So now what we should do is we should have an uh, extra loop counter. Integer j is zero. I will say this is position in the reminders array, okay? That's something you should really try to trace and try to understand. This method is slightly more complicated than the one the methods we defined before, okay? So now entry e is over here, and then we say if it is the case that e dot get birthday dot equals birthday. In this case, what should we do? In this case, we should do two things. We should say now uh, reminders at position j, not i, because somehow the first person, the first position to start with should be, be uh, should be according to what the current value is in j. Okay, be careful. So we're only using j. J is for us to refer to the reminders array. I is for us to refer to the entries array. Okay, they should be separate. Is assigned to entries at position i, and then you want to make sure j plus plus. Okay. Dot get name, of course. Okay, I would say for this method here, it's certainly more complicated than the methods we defined before. You should really study this one more carefully, okay? Hey, so now, and then you can say return, and then reminders. Okay, that's what we have. Now, let's go back there and then see what we get. And we got another version there that we should define, but this one should be much, much easier because we have already done one version there. The other version will just be, just massage the input a little bit so you can, we can reuse that method. Okay, let's define that now. So now for this get birthday book, uh, for get remind this over here. So now let's just copy this over here. I'm gonna change that. Okay. So now it's gonna be, integer month integer day and now what we can do is simply return over here you can say simply return what you can do well let me show you uh just an extra line you can say birthday bd is new birthday month and day and then you can say return get reminders birthday. Well, let me call it birthday, maybe. Okay, this is one way where you have some intermediate variable called birthday. Uh, let me show you the most concise way you can write. Okay, you can simply say return this anonymous objects. Okay, remember, you don't necessarily need a name for every object. Okay, this one also do. Okay, I'll leave both versions for you. Okay, so now both should work. And now let's see what the expected output should be. The expected output should be, it should just be uh, no entries to be uh, reminded, right? So that's that's true for empty book, but we aim for as uh, completeness, really. If you try that, what you will get is, is simply zero and zero. But we'll see that once we have, uh, we are saving our time for later uh, scenarios where the book is not empty, okay? So now, so far so good. And now let's turn this into J unit test. And then we are done for this particular section. Okay, so now let's now copy that and go to the test. Add test. Public void test number 13. And now paste that. And I will need BB and BD13, okay? So now BB is empty over here. And also we got BD 13. Okay, let me just retrieve that from before. BD uh, 13, did I miss that? Let's see where it is. Okay, so if I go to 
BD uh, 13. It was created. Let's see where it is. I believe in Eclipse, you can find out exactly where it is. Right click and then you can say show open decoration. That's what you can do. And it tells you it is exactly here, right? BD 13. Okay, that's a useful feature to have. Okay, that's in section three that I created. Okay, go back there and put BD 13 there. Okay, so now we're almost set. So now we're going to turn the print statements into uh, assertions. So we're going to say assert equals when when we give it an empty book to remind that length should just return zero. Similarly, when we try to call the other version of the get reminders, it should be the same. Assert equals, and over here we can also say zero. Okay, so now this one exactly corresponds to what you will do manually in the console. And of course, this is much nicer for uh, aggression test, uh, regression test. Okay, let's execute the test. So now we have so far accumulated 14 tests and all of them pass.